Hey guys, welcome back. I'm just sitting here um, trying to catch a little bit of sun, a little bit of shade today, just watching the grass grow. Actually, I'm not watching the grass grow. <laughs> I'm looking at my cover crop. Um, like I mentioned uh, probably a couple of episodes ago that I, I wanted to talk about cover crops and um, I hope this doesn't take too long because I wanted to kind of get into it, um, well, maybe a little bit deeper than you'd like, but uh, I wanted to discuss cover crops, um, not in general, but in specifics. So, um, so I've got a little bit of cover crop left over that I'd gotten earlier in the year and um, this is for a fall cover crop in my area and it's buckwheat, oats, rye grain, and valley peas. And what that cover crop is going to do for me is cover the, the empty soil I have in these two beds in particular because the soil that I put in them was from a compost pile and I didn't have a lot of soil after making a lot of beds. I didn't have a lot of soil left for these two. So on the bottom is a lot of larger um, particles of wood chips. And then as I got to the top, I tried to get some, some smaller, um, I tried to get some smaller particles of dirt. I ran it through, um, I ran it through a sifter of sorts. So let me just grab this chicken wire. I stapled the chicken wire over the top of the garden bed and threw the soil on top of it and then got out the largest particles that I could and threw them aside. And then uh, I, oh, if I wanted some smaller uh, particles on the top then I would run it through a little shaker but, but I didn't want to go through that much uh, work for just these two garden beds so anyway I put down a cover crop and let me show you the two books that I got <laughs> when I started gardening in the late 70s early 80s this or these are the two books I started with an ortho all about vegetables and the joy of gardening and I think I also had a sunset um, gardening book that was about this big anyway I don't know what happened to the sunset book but it doesn't really matter because so many other books have come out in the meantime that tell you so much more you know people are learning more and more about gardening and different things you should do in your garden than back in the day but anyway you don't need to know that we're talking about a cover crop so what a cover crop is is um, seeds from the legume family uh, let's see I've got well, I have black-eyed peas in here and pinto beans because I took those out of the out of the kitchen and I don't know what else I have oh I've got some barley in here that I bought at the store in the in the bulk section uh, the bulk section in your store, if you have a big store, um, they have all kinds of things for like, I don't know, 34, 55 cents a pound, something like that. It's just ridiculously cheap um, just to put in, in your ground for your cover crop. So your cover crop is something you put down on bare soil. It can be in boxes. It can be on the ground. It's just anywhere where you have bare soil and you don't want any erosion to happen or uh, the cracking of the top of the soil. Uh, the cover crop will help with that. It'll help bring nutrients up from uh, down deep. The, the legumes that you plant that have deeper roots will bring nutrients up from, from down deep in the soil. And then the, the ones that have shallower roots will will create this nice matting across your soil. And I wanted it for these two beds especially because the soil was just qu not questionable, but just I didn't think it was very good soil for me to grow in next year. So 
I just thought a cover crop was great. And the reason I mentioned these books that I had back in the day was because they didn't they didn't mention anything about cover crops at all. No I didn't I'd never heard about cover crops in a garden except for um, big gardens, I mean farming. I knew that farmers uh, put down cover crops. You know, I just associated cover crops with farming and large large pieces of land, not something small like a garden box or, or a small garden in the ground. So let me bring you a little bit closer down to what I've got planted. And I hope that's close enough for you. We've got some uh, buckwheat and gosh, I have to look at the bag to see what else. Um, we've got some buckwheat, oats, rye grain, valley peas, and all those other things that I bought at the store. That There's a pinto bean. I didn't get him planted very well. Um, what I did was get the bag open. So I'm going to put some more in there. And all you do for a cover crop is just sprinkle your seeds that you either purchased at the store or online and uh, toss them in your bed or wherever you want to put your cover crop. And what this is great for, um, not only suppressing weeds that would come up in your soil, but it makes that nice root mat that I was talking about um, that just covers the top layer of your soil. And when it has grown for a couple of months, what I'll do is I'll cut this all back and lay it over and cover it with some more compost or some worm castings and that'll create a layer of what they call green manure um, just adds to adds to the soil it's going to add to my bed in such a great way it brings up nutrients like i had mentioned from the uh, the the deeper soil and whatever nutrients are down below it reduces that surface crusting, you know, the surface crusting you get when it's rained all winter long and then it's spring, it starts drying out and you've got those little cracks in your ground, or I do. So this will help with that. Actually, it'll stop it. Um, it suppresses soil diseases and pests. One of the most important things it does that I've left out is it adds nitrogen to the, your soil. And what they call that is fixing nitrogen. But I have, I don't know, I don't really like that term that much. <laughs> um, it's nitrogen fixing. But um, I'm going to just say that it amends nitrogen into your soil. And how it does that is it works with a bacteria that's in your soil, the legumes the legumes work with a bacteria that's in your soil called rhizobia. And that rhizobia attaches to the roots of, leg of the legumes and creates little nodules full of nitrogen on those roots. And they do that by taking nitrogen out of the air and putting it into those nodules on the roots. So that's one thing, one reason why you want to cut it back and leave the roots in the soil. Um, when you cut it back, you can give this green stuff to your chickens. You can put it on your compost pile or like I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay it over and cover it with dirt. That's going to create just another layer in my bed of organic material. So anyway, back to the rhizobia. Uh, the rhizobia should be in your soil but it doesn't last in your soil forever and you may or may not have the rhizobia in your soil that bacteria I'm hoping that there's some in here but every one of these plants is every one of these plants really with the crows 
<laughs> Let me show you this. Oh. Can you see those crows up in the air? This is crazy. And the cars. Crows and cars. I think that's what I'll call my <laughs> I'll call my channel is crows and cars. <laughs> oh. Anyway, let's get back to it. You may or not you may or may not have the rhizobia bacteria in your soil. So when you buy the seeds for your cover crop, you can buy them pre Come on, crows. You can buy them pre-inoculated with the species of bacteria that you need. So I, when I got my um, when I got my seeds, I bought pre-inoculated seeds. Now you can get a little packet that is. Let's see. Can you see that? <laughs> you can buy a little packet that's about that big. <laughs> that is. Uh, inoculation bacteria for your cover crop. Now this <laughs> is a package of dry yeast, but can you see that? Package of dry yeast, but but the reason I brought this out for you to see was, I'm going to turn it around, basically you can get a little packet about that big of rhizobia inoculant for your cover crop, your particular cover crop. And what you do, you can wet down the legumes that you got, moisten them just a little bit, put the, put the rhizobia bacteria in there, mix it around, make sure they're all nice and coated, then plant them. Or you can buy pre-inoculated seeds. So, anyway, <laughs> you, um, oh, one more thing. Just one more thing on the rhizobia bacteria is some of the bacteria is cross, will cross pollinate. So say on the clovers, one bacteria, one rhizobia bacteria will cover um, quite a few different clovers. So, it, you know, it gets a little confusing when you get into when you get into, you know, the rhizobia bacteria species specific. Well, you know, sorry, it is. It may be in your soil, it may not be. Um, but if you inoculate your seeds or if you buy pre-inoculated seeds, what it will do is help with those nodules on the roots, those nitrogen nodules. It'll, it'll help make them, plus make them bigger and with a greater amount of nitrogen. So you want those in your soil, you can till them under, you can cut them up so that they stay in your soil and your soil will be, will be full of nitrogen. <laughs> so your plants are going to grow whether you have the rhizobia or not. They're going to produce some nitrogen, but with the rhizobia, it's just gonna go crazy. I took what I had from out of the kitchen and what I got at the store I wanted to make sure it would grow, so I took some soil from out of uh, this bed, in this bed particularly, and uh, they came up. Everything that I had in the kitchen came up. So your plants are going to grow rhizobia, or not, uh, rhizobia bacteria or not, but you want as much nitrogen as you can get. So I would buy pre-inoculated seeds or get the little packet. Uh, not yeast, but it's about this size little packet of rhizobia bacteria to inoculate your seeds. And when you go to order your seeds, it'll probably ask you pre-inoculated or not inoculated seeds. And you just check off whatever you want to, whichever one you want, uh, depending on if you're going to put in a cover crop or not. So let me back up here a minute. So, in that bed right there, uh, all, the, all the cover crop is coming up and I'm really happy. And this bigger 4x8 bed uh, looks like it's all coming up. I may throw a little bit more in there. That's the story of cover crops and if you want to know any more about it, 
I'll make a list and put it below uh, what legumes you should plant if you live in colder area, uh, in the sunny area. In the cold areas back east, uh, north, south, or like I am in the west, I'll put a list below, down below, of what legumes you should plant in for your area, or and also what also what legumes are are the most nitrogen producing. Um, there are a few that produce more nitrogen than others, so. I'll put that link, not link, I'll put a list below. And if you want to put in a cover crop, those will be the, the seeds you need to buy. Uh, Pre-inoculated with the rhizobia bacteria or uh, not inoculated at all. So that's the story on cover crops. Uh, I hope it didn't run too long and uh, I'm just excited. This is my first cover crop, so I'm anxious to get it to grow, and then uh, in a couple months I'll flatten it, cover it up with some worm castings or some compost, and add that extra organic material to my beds. So uh, it's been fun. Um, the reason I'm laughing is because I stop talking every time a car goes by. So I'm going to say this real quick before another car comes. So it's been fun, and uh, I'm glad you came back again to see what I've been doing in the garden, and I've come back again. I, it's still an ongoing process, and uh, there's more things to do. I'm not just sitting here watching the grass grow. <laughs> the reason I have gloves on is because I'm working. So let you guys go, and. There's a car. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.